All right, hi everybody. Uh, we're gonna try doing something uh, just a little bit different today in that instead of me having some long drawn out intro, uh, I'm just gonna start playing a game and then that gives people a chance to kind of show up and get settled in since I didn't really schedule this uh, in advance. And uh, then after we're done with Gate of Thunder here, uh, maybe I'll just talk a little bit and then, um, well then when I exit out of this game, then I guess you'll see uh, well, we'll talk about the core and stuff and uh, and how it works. So uh, I've got Gate of Thunder here. Just, um, boy, that's loud in my ears. Uh, that's better. Uh, I've got Gate of Thunder here. Uh, just paused right at the beginning. Um, although that kind of sucks, actually, because the intro to Gate of Thunder, I know we've watched it before uh, because we've played this game before, but uh, I think it's kind of too cool to skip. So... Uh, We'll check it out again. Here, I'll turn up the... All right, I'll turn it back down now. Uh, that's a good spot. Um, yeah, the, the intro music, I mean, it might be my favorite track uh, on this uh, in this game is this intro music. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thanks. I already got two super chats, uh, Pete Rabinowski and uh, Mouse Pounder. I don't know how you put that little one up. Uh, is that an emoji or whatever it is? But uh, that looks pretty cool. Uh, thank you. Um, and then, uh, RG Dickinson was asking about, uh, turbo function. And, uh, I think that just comes down to the controller. If you have a controller that has turbo functionality, then, uh, then you can have it. I don't think that I know of there's a way like in the mister to tell it that your controller is going to be like turbo if you hold it down. And I mean, smoke monster, I don't know if he is here or just was here, but. Um, you know, maybe he can address that, but that's my understanding. And, um, okay. He says you can do auto fire. Well, how do you do auto fire? Well, I don't really want to do it anyway, but, uh, but smoke, maybe you can explain it to the chat people there. Um, one thing that would have been cool. I mean, I'm streaming this now because this, this core, I mean, this is just the turbo graphics 16 core It's not like a whole separate core, but, uh, but this core just came out today. And so I figured, you know, I've been kind of wanting to do another stream for a while. And uh, when this came out, I figured, well, this is what we'll do. Um, what was I saying? Uh, oh, I was just saying that, you know, I pre-ordered the uh, the 8 bit do controller or 8 bit do or 8 bit whoever uh, controller that um, is coming out for the TurboGrafx 16 mini system. But and it's coming next week. So how cool would it have been uh, if that controller was here for this? But uh, the stars just didn't align on that one. So, um, so that's okay. Um, if anybody cares, uh, the controller I'm using is an 8-bit Doe M30, which, uh, I like this controller, but then, uh, the other day, uh, MVG, Modern Vintage Gamer, uh, posted, like, a, a short video on his Twitter account showing that, uh oh oh man, I got lucky, uh, showing that the D-pad on his, oh man, uh, is, I don't know if you want to say the D-pad is failing, but it like makes this awful cracking, creaking noise. And after he posted that, like some other people like chimed in and said they were having the same problem. So, um, you know, and then somebody else was saying that you can put like white lithium grease in it to solve the problem, which like, that's cool, but you know, you shouldn't have to do that, obviously. So, uh, that's kind of a disappointment just cause, you know, over on Twitch, 
uh, uh, oh boy, I'm just not paying attention. Uh, over on Twitch a couple weeks ago, you know, Corey and I did a live stream uh, where we read through um, uh, an, uh, an issue of EGM. We only got about halfway through it, but uh, for some reason, at some point, we started talking about the M30 controller and both saying how much that how much we liked it. And uh, and then it was like a day or two later that I saw that MVG tweet. So I mean, all I can say is that my controllers are still fine, but uh, maybe mine get lighter use than other people. Um, I mean, maybe I'm more delicate with my controllers, but I, I mean, I kind of doubt it. I think it's just probably the uh, overall hours that my controller has uh, is probably, you know, relatively speaking, pretty low. Uh, I kind of had half a mind to like turn up the uh, turn up the volume more for this, just as I wanted people to be able to hear uh, the music and whatnot, um, just as a means of sort of assessing the quality of the core. I mean, for me, I you know I have yet to hear anything that makes me think that this core is um, you know any less accurate than the other ones. So. Um, you know, it's funny, the Mr. The Mr. pretty quickly made my uh, Mega SG, you know, maybe not quite obsolete, but, uh, you know, I don't think I've plugged in my Mega SG, really, uh, except maybe to do a live stream with or something, uh, since I got the Mr. And then the same thing with the Super NT. And I still had my, um, my PC engine with my Super SD System 3 down here. Uh, because if I needed to record gameplay footage or I wanted to stream Turbo CD games, then uh, then I still had to have that. And I guess, you know, nothing against the Super SD System 3. I mean, I still think it's a cool product, but at least for me personally, I don't really see why I'm going to be uh, needing it uh, anymore. At least with the, with the Mega SG and the Super NT, um, you know, I have the option of playing with real cartridges, right? So, like... You know, I got sent Xeno Crisis from Bitmap Bureau, you know, a few months ago. And uh, that way I was able to, to play it, you know, uh, uh, on the Mega SG. But that doesn't really happen so much with the uh, with the Turbo Graphics. So, let's see if I can not screw this up. All right, he's changing color. That's a good sign. Oh, oh my God, I thought I was dead right there. Can I pause it? Not yet. Or I'm gonna pause it in a second. And uh, I mean, there's enough people in here that now I feel like I can. Oh, and the music keeps playing. How nice is that? Um, well, I see that Smoke Monsters already got things covered in the chat, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna scroll up here a little bit. And uh, oh, Mothboy says you should link the Mister Setup article. It should be in the uh, in the description. But I mean, I could copy and paste it. Uh, real fast and um somebody tell me how the audio sounds and in, in my ears that my voice sounds a little bit muddy but uh these aren't like monitor headphones so maybe they're a little bit like bass hyped um oh is it it's Ra rabotinsky rat what did i say rabinotsky i don't even know what i um sorry about that man i mean i'm used to that nobody can ever say my name correctly i just I don't even tell people my last name anymore. I just spell it. Um, oh, wow. Chris Covell's here. What's up, man? Oh, good. There's Joe. I'm glad he saw my tweet. Um, uh, anyway, uh, so one thing I was just going to say real fast, not that it really matters that much. Um, but, you know, a Smoke Monster mentioned uh, that he likes the new view. So, uh, so I'll just point that out. Uh, so I, I didn't really rearrange the basement. I mean, the furniture is all in the same place, but um, this is not where I normally sit when I do uh, a live stream. Uh, normally, where I sit, it would have been like over there. Uh, so, like now, you can see that the, uh, the Atari H poster that Rory sent me is now way back there. So, uh, this is like the desk where I do like the magazine read-throughs, and I ended up setting up the computer over here, and I bought a, a second monitor. And um, which makes it easier to do live streams, especially if I want to have a guest on. Uh, and it's also just more comfortable because now I'm sitting in like a normal chair 
instead of uh, right there is the chair I was sitting in, which is like a bistro chair, and it, it just isn't that comfortable. So uh, anyway, uh, oh yeah, Mothboy says his M30 is doing that cracking noise too. That's a shame. Um, Rabotinsky. Yeah, now that you say it like that, uh, that makes sense. No, my wife's not out of the house. She's uh, she's here. I don't. I don't really have a good excuse for why I haven't been live streaming. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like the world is ending, and like you know, I just sit down in the basement and just be sad or something. But uh, uh, you know, maybe I just need something like this to kind of kickstart things again. Uh, anyway, I don't. Um, I don't think I had anything else to uh, say. Do you have one millisecond polling enabled? I don't, dude, I don't know how to do any of that stuff, man. Like, I'm just, uh, I mean, the only thing I changed in, like, the INI file is uh, uh, to make sure I had integer scaling on. So, um, like, I don't I don't feel any uh, noticeable input lag. Uh, I think the fact that I've already died a few times has more to do with the fact that I just wasn't paying attention. So I'm going to keep playing Gate of Thunder just a little bit more. And then, um, you know, for those of you who follow the show on Twitter, uh, you know, I tweeted out earlier today and basically said that I was going to be doing this. And, um, you know, I, I said that I was going to start with Gate of Thunder, but that after that, you know, we could play whatever and just, you know, basically ask for requests. And uh, I got a bunch of requests. And so I have them all written down on a pad here. So, um, uh the next game we're probably going to play is Rondo of Blood, uh, just because it got uh, requested, like, I think three times. And um, we won't play it for a long time, just because, you know, I've streamed that game before. But, you know, I'm assuming people are just curious to see how it's going to be uh, on the Mister. So, you know, we can load it up and check out uh, the intro and um, maybe play the first level or something like that. I don't really know. I haven't played this game at all. I think the last time I played this game, you you guys watched me play it, so that tells you how long it's been. I just don't remember stuff. It's funny, this, uh, this weapon I'm using right now, uh, I think it's called Earthquake. And it's funny because it's the least uh, visually impressive weapon in the game, but it's by far the most powerful. Uh, the other thing I did, I'll say, uh, you know, so I just basically, the reason I asked for people to tweet requests at me is uh, so I knew what games to load uh, onto the SD card, uh, just because uh, this mister, which this is the exact mister that I built for that article, uh, this mister only has a 128 gig micro SD card in it, so uh, I don't have room to put, like, the entire turbo cd library i don't even know how big that would be but it would be pretty big i mean i have a i have 128 gigabyte uh sd card in my super sd system 3 and i would say that it's you know probably just about full and even that is like a curated collection uh not that i put together my friend todd did but um so but here i've got a 128 gig card but it's also got like a complete set of neo geo roms and it's also got a bunch of um, uh, Sega CD uh, games, which, I mean, just speaking of which, like I said in the description, uh, you know, this year we got Capcom CPS support. Uh, although I think you, Smoke Monster can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at this point you still have to be a Patreon supporter of uh, the guy that made that or is putting those cores together. Um, and we also got, I think that was this year, unless it was late last year, uh, Sega CD support, which is, um, which is, I think pretty amazing because it, you know, at this point, I, you know, I think that turbo CD was probably the biggest sort of glaring, uh, missing thing, uh, on the mister. I mean, there's other things that I would like to see, uh, 
probably most notably uh, the Atari Lynx, but um, oh, I, gotta, I gotta pay attention here. I'm getting my butt kicked. Um, but you know, the Atari Lynx I think would not be like a hugely popular uh, core. It's just something that personally I would like to have. But uh, Turbo CD I think is something a lot of people uh, would like to see. And you know, oh crap! You know, it's amazing with. Uh, you know how fast things are progressing with with uh, FPGA uh, based retro gaming technology. That you know we were so excited to get things like the Super SD System Three and uh, with like the Mega SD, and then now Crix has his uh, new EverDrive coming out that's going to have Sega CD support. But then like you know a couple months later or something, you get the same thing on the Mister. So um, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, I'm just Pausing it to check uh, the chat again. Uh, we got a couple more uh, super chats. I just want to say thank you to uh, Ed and then a bunch of numbers. So thanks, man. Um, oh, Smoke says there's a script for the one millisecond polling. Uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll do it later. How about that? Um, Ed says it's the first time you see me I'll be able to catch me live in a while. Well, I haven't actually done a stream since March, so uh, that's got something to do with it uh, for sure. And uh, game sessions, you love my Let's Read series. Hopefully, I can do uh, another one soon. I really thought that you know, with um, the whole coronavirus thing going on, I have so much more free time, and I really thought I would end up uh, making a lot more content. And um, um, I haven't so far, but uh, I'm trying to change that because if I don't, then whenever life goes back to normal, I'm going to look back at this time and really regret the fact uh, that I didn't take advantage of it. Um, yeah, Wook says he's out of room even without the Sega CD library, yeah. Uh, and then we got $5 Canadian from Matthew Roy. Or is it Matthew Waugh, like Patrick Waugh, since you're Canadian? Uh, anyway, thanks, man. Um, what else we got? Anything? Bunch of numbers, yeah. Um, oh, that's Mike. Oh, okay, well, that's not... Uh, that's not the... Um, handle or whatever that I'm used to seeing for you on YouTube, so... Uh, sorry about that. Hey, Morpheus, what's up, man? Um, how possible is a 3DO core? Boy, I doubt very possible, but that would be a question for Smoke Monster, not me. So uh, let's play one more level of um, of Gate of Thunder, and uh, and then I'm going to back out, and so you can kind of see uh, how the... I mean, the core works the same as any other core. Uh, no, not like Patrick Waugh. That's too bad. Um, yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, here we go. I've only got one life left anyway, right? So, where does it even say how many lives you have? I think I have two. So, maybe we're okay for a little while. Give me a shield, damn it. Oh, there's... So, there's... It's kind of funny. It seems like, you know, most of these games have, like, the same three weapons. You know, you have, like, uh, you know, a laser beam, and then this wave thing, and then I don't have the earthquake right now, but... I'm not saying they have, like, an earthquake thing, but, you know, go play Soldier Blade and, like, the three weapons you have look awfully similar to these three. And you could say the same thing about a game like Truxton or something, too. That's not what I wanted. Oh, damn it, I hit the ceiling. needed that. It's funny, I'm not, uh, obviously I'm not doing a good job playing this game at the moment, but uh, Gate of Thunder is, I think, a pretty approachable shooter. Uh, kind of like, uh, just to bring up Soldier Blade one more time. Uh, it's the same thing, like, you don't really have to be that good at shooters, I don't think, uh, to be able to get pretty deep uh, into the game, which is nice, because, you know, some games like uh, Image Fight comes to mind. Like, Image Fight kind of, like, hands your butt to you, like, right from the beginning. So I think it it ends up turning off a lot of people uh, because they get frustrated. And then, you know, a common refrain that, that I always hear from people is that, you know, oh, I suck at shooters, you know. And sometimes I think that depends on, like, well, what shooter are you trying to play? 
And if you're picking something that really isn't very nice to you, like right out of the gate, then I could see somebody walking away and saying, oh, this game is, you know, too much for me. But, oh, nice. Um, but if you play a game like, uh, like I said, like Gate of Thunder or uh, Soldier Blade, it um, it kind of eases you into it a little bit. So when you play, if you load up something like Soldier Blade and you're making it to like the third stage, uh, you know, within the first couple times of playing it, that gives you more of a feeling like, um, you know, maybe I can handle this and I want to try playing again or whatever. So you notice in this game, I don't know if you noticed I did that, you can actually, if you double tap uh, the fire button, it will reverse the direction that your little options fire in. So this is a game where like you, this game has turbo basically because you just hold down the fire button uh, and then, uh, you know, you, you don't want to sit there and just keep tapping the fire button because if you do, then those little options are just going to keep flopping back and forth. Oh man. All right, game over. Uh, we didn't do that well there, obviously, but um, that's all right. Uh, somebody, easy, easy cake oven. Are you asking me what I think of the Virtual Boy? Um, I like the Virtual Boy in theory. My problem is just that it gives me a headache. And I, the first time I played the Virtual Boy was, uh, at, it was like a demo system that was set up at KB Toys. So back in the day, and I remember it gave me a headache uh, right away. So uh, all I did here was I, I hit the button on my controller that I have mapped to menu. And uh, that brings up this menu. And uh, again, this is just the TurboGrafx-16 core. So from here, I can also load uh, chip games and uh, super graphics games. But they just added, now you can uh, insert CD. And uh, just a couple, is it a couple things or just one thing? Uh, if you go into hardware, uh, right now the two things that somebody might want to mess around with, uh, not really mess around with, but one here is arcade card, whether or not you want to be using the arcade card. And from what I've read, you don't really want to use the arcade card uh, if it's not if you're not playing an arcade game, uh, which you might be thinking, duh. But I'm just saying you don't want to just leave it enabled and save your settings and forget it because you m may have instances where uh, a game starts acting wonky because the arcade card is enabled. So you want to leave it disabled and then just enable it if you want to play uh, like Sapphire or something. And then the other thing here is CD Seek, which you can change from normal to fast, and that's just supposed to speed up loading times. Uh, I've never really found, um, I've never really found the loading times on the Turbo CD to be a big deal. So I just leave it on normal just because you know I don't know if there's. You know, maybe it could cause some kind of weirdness to happen, or um, I don't know. I just, to me, there's no reason to enable that, so I don't. Um, uh, John wants to know if I ordered a mode. Uh, I did. I ordered uh, one mode, so um, I do. Ha obviously, I have a Dreamcast and a Saturn. It's probably going to spend most of its time in my Saturn, and I don't really mind having to open up the system every once in a while and swap it back and forth because that mode thing's not cheap. So I don't, you know, I'm not so rich that I'm going to buy two of those things. Um, but it should be really cool. Uh, I, I think that they have a really good... Uh, Terra Onion always makes really nice front ends. So, like, the menu system would be nice and everything. But it's also something that I can buy right now, uh, unlike the other uh, options, uh, ODE options, for uh, the Saturn and the Dreamcast. So, so Yeah. Uh, and then, sorry, Castle, it just made me laugh a little bit. Castlevania said, this is so dumb. Just buy a CRT, uh, a TurboGrafx-16, and a bunch of games. Yeah, the price of these things is just crazy. So, okay. Just a second. Throat's getting dry. All right, so if we go here to insert CD, uh, this is the list of all the CD games uh, that I have on here. Uh, I'm not going to read them all off, but um, basically what I did is uh, I made sure that every game that people asked about on Twitter is on here. And then I also watched uh, Bithead's Top 10 PC Engine Shooters video and uh, added things from that. And then I also just added a few things that uh, I wanted to check out, not necessarily on this live stream, but just, um, uh, just I don't know, at some point, I guess. So, uh, so now we're going to load up uh, uh, 
Rondo of Blood and check that out real fast. So now I've got that highlighted and I'm just going to hit the OK button. And you see now it goes back to uh, this is just what it would look like if you had uh, a Turbo Duo or a TurboGrafx-16 with the CD interface. Uh, this is the screen you would see when you put uh, a CD in there and close. it would read the CD and say, OK, push the run button to launch the game. So we push the run button and now the game's going to load. I don't know what what is recent equals one. Um, maybe it is nice. I don't. I've never heard of that. So um, maybe it's cool. Oh, we got we got to turn up the volume here. Auf der Schattenseite des Friedens und des Wachstums gab und gibt es aber auch immer das Böse. Die Menschen beginnen, das Wachstum abzulehnen und bezeichnen den Frieden als Degeneration. Wir haben uns hier versammelt, um die Mächte der Finsternis mit unserem verfluchten Blut zu rufen. Wir wollen dass sie die Welt regieren, wir erwarten lächelnd den Niedergang der Welt. That's awesome. Nach 100 Jahren ist der Böse wieder auferstanden. Er kann sich in eine Fledermaus, einen Wolf, und Nebel verwandeln. Er liebt die Nacht. Er schlürft das Blut von jungen Frauen und lebt ewig. Der Burger des Teufelschlosses, der Herr des Bösen, Graf Dracula, ist auferstanden. Oh, man. All right. It sounds like farting, but it's not. Turn that back down. It's funny, I don't, you know, my German is far from fluent. Very far from fluent. Uh, so I can just pick up, you know, certain words and phrases in there. Um, but, uh, you know, I, you know the, the blood of the young woman and stuff like that. And it, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's almost cooler that I can't understand all of it, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to set up a thing here. Uh, while I'm doing that. Uh, oh yeah, Wookie, that does sound pretty cool. I might I might play around with that recent thing. Uh, Morpheus wants to know if I own any CRTs for retro gaming. Um, yeah, I have uh, I have a bunch of them actually. Uh, I have a Commodore seventeen oh two, and uh, I have like three different uh, Sony PVM uh, monitors. Like I have two two fourteen inch ones and a and a, a nineteen inch nineteen inch one. So. Um, so yeah, what are we doing here? All right, I haven't played this one in a while, so I'm probably gonna suck at this too. Just FYI. All right, it, it won't let me. I didn't want to watch more cutscene, but it won't let me skip this one. So. And yeah, I mean that's a good point. Uh, I mean that's a that's a CRT monitor for retro gaming as well. Come on, man! It won't let me skip this. Uh, thanks for the thanks for the fiver, Jerry. I appreciate it. Are, are these emojis like a new thing with super chatting? I don't I don't recall ever seeing those before. loading I guess Thank <laughs> you. 
controls feel weird. I don't know. If... Like, they feel backwards. That's strange. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, hold on. I'm going to make sure that I got the control set correctly, because that feels really strange. Oh, crap. I already screwed it up. I'm going to have to do this again. But hey, now you get to see how to do that stuff, so. No. All right. Do it one more time. Right. Left, down, up. One, two. Select. One, three, four, five, six. Make sure I save that. Okay. Don't, do not want that. I haven't played this in so long. Uh, Jerry, I'm using the uh, 8-bit dough M30. Uh, this is the 2.4 gigahertz one, so um, I have the receiver plugged in. Um, you know, it's that... Like I said, this is the mister that I built for that article, so it's just that little, uh, you know, crappy seven dollar uh, uh, USB hub. Um, which I mean, I say it's crappy, but it, it works just fine. But um, I mean, unless smoke knows difference uh, or knows different, um, you know, there's like three USB ports on the DE10 Nano, but it seems like only one of those ports is really available to the mister core because. Uh, I actually bought, like, adapters because I thought I could just plug a, a second controller into one of those other ports, but um, unfortunately you can't do that, so. I keep pushing the wrong button. Uh, sorry, somebody had a question there. Um, how easy it is, is it to set up controls for a mister on a USB arcade layout? I mean, it's this. If, if you're saying you have a USB arcade stick, it's easy. I mean, it's the same. Um, it's the the same procedure for anything. You just go into the menu and say you want to define the controls, and it just tells you to push up and push down and, and whatnot. So, um, like, I have a, a Neo Geo stick, and then I have a USB adapter I use for that. But I mean, you could even have um, uh, like a modern arcade stick for like a PS4 as long as you have the right uh, adapter or whatever you need to connect it to the to the mister so um and somebody else had a question here uh how's it going question about super system 3 um so i'm not sure i understand your question actually maybe maybe smoke wants to help you with that i don't know um yeah all right Still feel like these controls are backwards. Hey, Brian, what's up, man? Uh, Audio Pasta, if you're asking me what my favorite uh, Castlevania is, uh, honestly, it's probably the first one. Um, you know, I just have... It, it's like the nostalgia factor, you know? Like, I definitely am not trying to say uh, that it's the best one. But, um, you know, it's the first one that I played. I think there's something about playing this game with this, this sort of Sega style controller that I think is maybe messing with my mind a little bit. I mean, I think as far as like just the regular non-open world 
uh, you know, Metroidvania, if you want to use that word, uh, Castlevania games, uh, I would say this is like the best one. But, you know, I didn't play this for the first time until, you know, I don't know, five or six years ago. Well, probably longer ago than that, I guess. But um, I guess I'm old enough now that something that happened a lot longer than that still feels like five or six years ago. Um, sorry, Smoke. I'm not sure what put some stank on it means uh, in, in this uh, situation. Yeah, I really like Symphony of the Night a lot, too, uh, for sure. Oh god, I hate this boss. Yeah, the DS Castlevania games are uh, are also really good. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, see, I'm still pushing the wrong buttons. Like, I keep pushing the, the attack button when I want to jump, and then the jump button when I want to attack, if that makes sense. Oh boy, there we go. Um, is there a new launch of episode in the works? Uh, I've got kind of like one of my big episodes that I'm working on. It's not a launch episode, it's like a console in-year uh, episode that I'm working on. Uh, I've worked on and off uh, on the launch of the NES but um, more off than on, and I kind of took a break from working on that uh, to, um, to work on the one that I'm working on now instead. So, do I have here, hold on a second, I wanna, I wanna try something, um, just because the muddiness of these earbuds is, um, is kind of driving me crazy a little bit, so. How's that? Oh, that's so much better. All right. So these are the uh, these are the earbuds that I usually use. So, um, all right. I don't think that's going to improve my gameplay any. Just uh, you know, full disclosure. I know there was a there was a special weapon that I should have grabbed uh, in the last room. Whoops! Oh, I was facing the wrong way. Damn it! Now I'm gonna get hit again. Keep getting caught facing the wrong way. Um, sorry, some I just saw somebody ask what earbuds like. So these are Bose earbuds. So I mean, go ahead and roll your eyes now. Um, the thing is, they're just really, really comfortable. And uh, see, I keep facing the wrong way. Um, they're just really comfortable. But I also like that. You know, it's funny because normally, like, you know, Bose gets kind of crapped on for um, kind of hyping the mid range. Uh, you know, in as far as the sound profile goes, which uh, maybe for like music is not the best, but for voice, it's actually really good. So, um, so they they work really well for like what I'm doing now. Like the other earbuds I had in our um, Bayer Dynamic earbuds, they're really nice earbuds for listening to music, but um, they just sounded really muddy. So. Uh, it was driving me a little bit crazy. Like they don't, they don't sound real. You know, if that makes sense. Like I want something that's more of a like. Um, uh, I've kind of had enough of this game, to be honest with you. Um, I love this game, but um, not today. I don't. Um, so I don't know what we should play next. Here, let me let me kill that. 
I'll turn that back up in a second. Don't worry. Um, so another game that got, uh, uh, well, multiple votes or whatever is actually Sapphire, and I haven't tried that yet, it's seeing how the um, the arcade card works. So, um, yeah, we're, so we're, we're kind of like trying to limit it to uh, CD games. So, you know, I love New Adventure Island. Uh, although I did, Jerry, I put Super Air Zonk on here so we could check that one out uh, if people want to. But um, for now, I'm going to check out... Uh, uh, Sapphire. So I'm going to enable the arcade card and then go back and boot up the game, which is right there. Yeah, I mean, I think Bose makes all right stuff, but like, you know, people who are like audiophiles uh, really dislike Bose. Um, I use, actually, my speakers here on the desk are like Bose computer speakers. Um, cause I wanted something small that still had a decent sound. Um, but like, you know, my stereo system is now over on the table or whatever you want to call it. There you go. Uh, the thing where I used to sit uh, when I did the streams and like, there's not any Bose stuff over there, but, um, the main reason I like, uh, these earbuds actually is just because they're super comfortable. They don't actually go like in your ears. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that, but they're made in a way that they kind of just sit in your ears. But, like, I can still hear people uh, in the room. Like, they're not um, they're not sound isolating uh, or anything, which sometimes is bad and sometimes is good. So, um, Yeah, I mean, same here. I'm just, like, I'm not... I'm not an audiophile by any stretch of the imagination. I just want to listen to music or whatever. But, um, you know, these sound fine for music, but I would say the other ones, which are still hanging um, from my shirt, because I should pull them out, um, these do sound better, you know, just because I, I don't consider myself an audiophile. That doesn't mean I can't tell the difference um, between, you know, different um, headphones. So, I mean, you can see the game uh, loaded up just fine. Um, to be honest, this is not a game that I've played enough where I would be able to say, oh, you can see this, uh, you know, something right here that, that isn't quite accurate or whatever. So, um, you know, hopefully maybe there's somebody in the chat who, oh, man, I wasn't paying attention. Um, you know, hopefully maybe there's somebody in the chat who's more of an aficionado who can look at this and see that, oh, this, this does look good or... <laughs> or no, it doesn't, so. Damn it. Is there a way to have your dude, like, well, I guess it's a lady, right? But, um move a little bit faster. Like this plays a little bit too much like heavy unit. No, that was a bomb. Don't do that again. Or I noticed you can choose different characters. Maybe some of them are faster than others. But I mean, this is like top speed right here, and that's not very good. It's a really cool boss, or like mini boss, I guess. But see if you can not fire for a while. See now my weapons are all extra charged up, and then you can you have sort of this little special uh, thing you can do. And that, I mean that's cool. You see the boss uh, creeping around in the background there. That like that's just the power of the arcade card right there.
I'm gonna try a different ship here. I feel like every time I play this game on a live stream, which is probably only like twice to be fair, um, this is about how it goes. This is just not a game I've really spent any time with at all. And it really seems like the kind of game that you need to spend some time with. Um, which is not like a bad thing. It just, you know, some some shooters require a lot more memorization than others do, you know, like, um, I mean, not just shooters, but just some games in general, like, you know, you have to know the patterns of the bosses. And, um, you know, clearly I'm not um, doing that here, so. Oh, Brian, I saw you said you, you said you use Elax as computer speakers. I always kind of wanted to check those out. Sorry, I wasted a bomb, but I was in trouble because I wasn't paying attention. So. so this ship is still slow. And I don't know, I saw somebody, yeah, C there says this game's overrated. Like, I really haven't played this game enough um, to have an opinion like that. But, you know, this is a game that gets, like, hyped up just because of the, you know, it's audio visuals, you know, being an arcade card game. So... You know, it maybe it is overrated. I don't. I don't really know. Um, all I know is I suck at it right now. So I keep trying different ships. I'm, I'm, I was just keep hoping like that some ship will be faster. Like this one. Look how slow that is. What am I supposed to do? See, this is how you wear out a D-pad, you know, is I think, like, subconsciously you start trying to push harder to get your dude to go faster. That's a really annoying noise. Instead of a power-up, I'd love a speed-up. See, I, I couldn't move fast enough to get out of the way. Oh, that's not going to be good. Alright, if it gives us another continue after this, I want to try the fourth uh, ship and see if it's any better. I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm not trying to make excuses. I mean, I just suck. I, I admit it. But uh, the speed of the ship really makes it not fun. Oh, no, we got game over. Uh, I'm going to restart it just once, just because I want to try that uh, fourth ship. What's in the... I'm just curious what's in the... Uh... Oh, see, I should be playing on easy, but I won't do that. Well, you can give yourself more credits when you do that. All right. So we did that one, that one, that one. Well, that one looks cool, at least. It doesn't want me to skip it, so. All right, here we go. Yeah, not, um... Not too fast either, to be honest. I think that's maybe just kind of a pet peeve of mine with shooting games. Is, um, you know, I like my ship to move a little bit faster. Or at least, I mean, at least have it as sort of an option um, or a power-up. I mean, it's cool, uh, you know, the games that actually allow you to adjust the speed of your ship. That's pretty cool. Um... But, you know, then you get games like, um, you know, Gradius or R-Type where, um, you know, you or, or Truxton where you pick up speed boost as a power-up. Although then it sucks because then when you die, um, I'm really starting to hate. You know, I hate this game, actually. I just decided. I don't hate it, but I don't want to play it anymore. Um, all right. What's next? So somebody wanted to see. This is kind of a funny one. 
So two people actually uh, requested Last Resort, which um, unless I'm uh, conflating it with a different game, Last Resort has quite possibly the worst uh, voice acting I've ever heard uh, in a game. So it'll be worth checking out just for that. The special mission unit were sent here to rescue hostages upon a request from the Lloyd government. There was, however, no sight of a camp at the designated location. We had been tricked by the Lloyd regime. What met our eyes instead was... That wasn't bad. Could Lloyd's government betray us? That's bad. Oh, did I say last resort, last alert? Colonel Kadar of the Republic of Libid, Mr. Lee of the Hong Kong Mafia, Chairman Steve of the Dual Foundation, Dr. Garcia, a brilliant physicist. With these four as its core figures, Force Project, an international armed band, began its evil activities. Its aim was to rule the world by organizing massacres, blackmailing, terrorism, and smuggling of weapons. Colonel Kadat of the Republic of Libya. What happened there? Yes, Mr. President. We're certain that Lloyd betrayed us. It seems that the Force Project is behind them. That's really Their bad. Their ability should not be underestimated. Yes, I have someone in mind. Let me handle this. Is it over? He's entrusted me with the task. So you'll ask him then? The only person who could possibly fight the Force Project is this man. Guy Kazama is the only one. All right. I don't even remember what kind of game this is, so this will be an adventure for everybody. Oh no, more. I thought I'd find you here. I thought we'd always do things together, even when we die. We've received a report that Lloyd and the Force Project jointly developed a stealth aircraft. You're not expecting me to steal it. That's what I want. Spartan has already infiltrated into Lloyd's frontline base, Blue Rhinos. He'll be your assistant on this mission. Well, I owe Lloyd and the Force Project one, and I always make it a rule to get square with these guys. All right, that's, that's enough. Let's just play the game. Um, sometimes that stuff's just funny. Uh, so somebody, uh, oh, uh, R.G. Dickinson says... Hopefully that's good. It says it's like Genesis Rambo. Well, that would be cool because um, uh, I love Rambo 3 on the Genesis. So, oh, this is a lot like, like a lot, a lot like Rambo 3. You can hear, I mean, I don't know how well you guys can hear it, but you can, I can hear that Red Book audio. Excuse me. have any like all right the other button button one doesn't do anything so that's okay that, that music is cool while at the same time being completely inappropriate for this game well okay got a little bit better anyway
Hey, Daryl's here. What's up, man? Thanks, dude. I just recently in wa uh, enjoyed watching a uh, multi-part stream of Daryl playing through Kid Icarus, um, which, as I've said on the show before, was the first game that um, I ever, I guess I'll say completed because I didn't, you know, I didn't really beat the game because, uh, I mean, I don't even know how many, you know, Kid Icarus gives you like unlimited continues, and um, I think I used most of them. Um, I mean, now's a good time as any to talk about, uh, sort of some other upcoming content. Um, you know, I've been thinking for a while about the next episode of flashback and then I sat down and, uh, you know what I, what I usually do is I make notes. Like I don't read them during the show, but just like by sitting down and writing stuff down as I think about it, it just helps me to sort of organize my thoughts. I mean, it's kind of like studying for a test, I guess. And, um... And what I thought was like, oh, this will be like one episode of flashback. Like, I quickly became clear that it was going to be like three. So, because uh, one thing I forgot to talk about, um, you know, computer wise, and then an another thing that I thought would just be like one. Okay, Spartan, hang in there just a while longer. That was so bad. That's like somebody that was already doing another voice for the game being like, oh man, I got to do another voice. I have to change it. I know what I'll do. I'll sound like Kermit the Frog. Wasn't so bad. That, that might be a little bit too loud. Uh, set eight time bombs inside the hangar and get ready to blast the base. Um, all right, I'll try. Um, Yeah, so I was saying, so I got those uh, kind of going on. Uh, three episodes of flashback that I'm going to start working on. And um, and then, I, I mean, I've always got, like, lots of other things that, like, I intend to do. You know, like, oh, I have all these computers I want to do uh, videos with, et cetera, et cetera. But um, one thing that I've had several people ask about, oh, boy, is, um, you know, me doing some kind of thing with the arcade cabinet back here. Um, I guess just like, I don't know, doing like a, like a little tour or walkthrough of it or something. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. But, um, uh, for a long time, I've wanted to, uh, change the joysticks in that cabinet. And I don't know what, you know, I guess cause I'm stuck at home, not doing anything else. Um, I, f I finally went ahead and ordered the joysticks and they're going to be here tomorrow. And so then what I was thinking I would maybe do is, um, cause I'm gonna have to change a bunch of parts in the joysticks cause I bought, you know, different springs and different actuators and different gates is I might just do one of them before I do the video and then I'll do the video changing the other one. And, um, and then we can kind of have a look at the arcade cabinet, but I mean, it would be something that's like, you know, really casual and, you know, totally unscripted. So um, just sort of like, you know, if we're all hanging out in my basement together, working on my arcade cabinet, you know, um, but I don't know. I thought that might be kind of fun. So we'll see. And then I did have another magazine read through that I was working on. I kind of quit working on it, but, um, that was a, a super Nintendo buyer's guide from 1991. Like it was the very first EGM, uh, super Nintendo buyer's guide, which I think was, um, you know, judging by the content in there, 
uh, in the guide, I'm, I'm pretty sure came out well before the Super Nintendo did. So it was like, you know, if it was like 1991 and, uh, you know, you were really like, you know, chomping at the bit for the Super Nintendo to come out. Like this, this would have been the kind of thing that you would have bought just to have something to like check out uh, until the system was actually released. So I'm just going back this way because I don't, I'm pretty sure I probably didn't. I only set like one bomb. So yeah, there's another one. So these red X's, you step on that and see now you set a time bomb or whatever. We come in this way? Maybe not. Oh no, we didn't because I wonder if this is the exit then. Uh, Tim wants to know any chance of a uh, PC gamer. So I just <clears throat> that's a good point. Uh, so another thing I just ordered on on eBay actually should be here tomorrow, but um, so I got a PC gamer magazine, but from like 2002, because uh, that's when I first subscribed to that magazine because I finally got like a gaming PC, like a then modern gaming PC. So I was going to do a read through with that, but I still want to do a read through of like an early 90s, uh, you know, either PC gamer or computer gaming world. Uh, I had ordered one on eBay last year, and it got, I guess, lost in the mail. So, I mean, the seller gave me a refund, but I was just bummed out because, you know, I kind of carefully chose that one uh, based on the games that were um, were covered in it. All right, so this, I'm guessing this must be the exit, but obviously we have not placed all the bombs yet. Um, is there a... I was hoping maybe there was a... Oh, can you change things? Oh... Nice. Um, I was hoping for a map or something. Um, so anyway, I'd, I'd still like to do that, but I just figured, you know, I don't know, maybe doing like a modern PC. Well, it's not modern. It's from 2002, but a more modern one would just be like maybe kind of a cool change of pace. Because, um, you know, I just, I feel like most of these read-throughs are really just um, focused on a pretty narrow range of time. And um, so it might be cool to just kind of get out of that bubble uh, a little bit. I mean, we'll see. It, you know, it's just sometimes, you know, I do these read-throughs and <laughs> thanks, Daryl. Um, sometimes I do these read-throughs and they don't get a lot of views. And then that's how I know, like, okay, that's not, um, that's not what people are interested in. And that's totally fine. But um, sometimes it's just fun to experiment. Um, just trying different things. But I, I think that one would, that would be cool because, you know, that, that was like right when I got a gaming computer, like I got like a, a Windows XP or whatever, uh, based gaming computer. And, um, you know, I think generally speaking, when the magazine read through has stuff in it that I can relate personal experiences about, I think it makes for a better video. So, like, I think that's, like, for me at least, I think that the PSM videos um, always turn out really well uh, just because then it's, um, you know, I'm talking about, like, oh, yeah, I had this back in the day or I rented this one um, more so than when I'm talking about 8 and 16-bit games, a lot more of it is just, like, Oh, this would have been cool to have, or, you know, I can speak intelligently on this only because, you know, I've played it a lot now or whatever, but I think it's a little bit different when you're like relaying, uh, personal memories from the past. So, um, I'd like to try to focus on that more, but you know, the problem is, is that, you know, when I had an NES, I didn't have very many games for it. Uh, I did get to play a lot of games at Jonathan's house. So that's, you know, I guess if I read... Uh, when I read like Nintendo Power, I think that then I can talk more about like a lot of personal stories. But, um, you know, with 16-bit stuff, you know, I had a Genesis, but really it was my secondary system. 
Can I leave yet? No. All right. I don't know if it's going to tell me. I, I mean, I haven't been counting how many of these bombs I've placed. Um... You know, anyway, during the 16-bit era, I was mostly playing PC games, so really it would make more sense for me to read a PC gamer from back then or something. But, but you know, the 16-bit generation is also my favorite generation of consoles, so, um, you know, I think I probably actually cover that on the show, like especially Genesis, uh, more than anything else just because I love it so much. Oh, here we go. Here's one. These are pretty cool, like little tiny, uh, little tiny stealth bombers. I don't know this for a fact, but I kind of get the impression that this game probably only gives you one life, uh, since you have so much health. And I, I only have one health sliver left. But we came in that way, so we're not going to go that way again. Um, so I feel like at any moment now I'm going to get game overed, although I could be wrong, but... See, Amiga is really, oh, nice. I needed that. I see that the Amiga is a hot topic of conversation in the chat tonight. That's cool. Uh, that's something that I haven't really covered as much as I would like to. Uh, like, it would be really cool, actually. And I actually looked into it a little bit on eBay. Um, it would be really cool to get an Amiga magazine. Uh, like Amiga Power or, uh, like, it would have to be something from the UK. I mean, do we even have an Amiga magazine in the US? I feel like we must have had one, but... Um, I think a better one would come out of the UK. But um, there's just so many awesome games on the Amiga that... Oh, here we go. There's one right here. Oh, here we go. All right. Now we can escape. Um, so maybe now we go this way. Uh, it, for me, like, the Amiga is like a huge, uh, like, untapped resource of games that, you know, that I haven't checked out yet. All right. Here we go. Uh-oh. This is going to suck. Um, is any of this doing anything? Uh-oh. Game over? Oh, we can continue. Oh, we can do it. Wait, do I have to go drop all those... or place all those bombs again? Oh, I don't want to do that. All right, that was enough of Last Alert. I think that's kind of a cool game, though. I think it's too bad that, you know, at least when I look at... Uh, when I look at Last Alert, the first thing I think of is um, is the bad uh, voice acting because it's actually not a bad game. Uh, all right, what else we got? Uh, we tried that. We tried that. Somebody wanted to see Ease Book One and Two. I'm not gonna. I mean, that's not a light. That's like a dedicated multiple part live stream kind of game. Uh, not. Oh, I want to check this one out. Somebody asked to see Double Dragon Two, and I just wonder how uh, Double Dragon Two is. Uh, on the PC engine. There it is. Because uh, for me, that's like, an, you know, I always play that game on the NES. And on the NES, it's a good game, but maybe here it's not. Um, so I'm checking the chat real fast just because I've been kind of trying to keep an eye on it, but um, not too much. Well, somebody's asking if I said anything about Streets of Rage 4. So I was going to do a live stream with Streets of Rage 4, but then I kind of didn't. And then I don't know if anybody even still cares. Um, I'd still like to do one. Um, I haven't played the game that much just because, uh, you know, Streets of Rage 4 came out like a couple weeks after I drilled that hole in my thumb. So um, for a while, uh, I couldn't play video games really which uh which that sucked oh damn it i didn't see somebody said hold down fire to strafe that would have come in handy um oh well somebody asked if i'm drinking any beer i got a yeah i got a beer here but 
just mostly because I reached into the fridge to grab something cold to bring down here. Um, uh, someone says, why don't you show any love for PC games? Start making memories. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I actually, um, I still read PC Gamer. I just feel like, it, like I buy it every month at the newsstand. And um, it's pretty rare that I, I find something in there um, that I really want to play, to be quite honest. I mean, I just feel like at this point, PC Gamer should just be called First Person Shooter Monthly. Uh, that's not really fair. It's not true. It, it, there, there's a lot of other stuff in there, but I just don't really see things I want to play. So, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a fair point when you say like, you know, that I'm relying on childhood memories, but it's just like, it's not like I don't play modern games, just not that much. And when I do, it's so rare that, that I'm really enjoying myself. And I don't think that's a commentary on modern games so much as it's just a commentary on my tastes. You know, if we got if we got more things like Streets of Rage 4, you know, by which I just mean I don't feel like we get that many games that are still in the style. See these these controls are backwards. I knew it. Here, I wonder, hold on. If I because I mapped these buttons for like a six button controller, so I wonder, where is that? Oops. So like my one button and my two button are backwards. No, that's definitely not gonna work. Um, well, it's not that big of a deal, I guess. Well, it kind of is a big deal. Here, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch them around real quick. That that makes me feel less like a loser. Um, down, up, one, two. What? Start three, four, five, six. Okay. Well, let's save that. You always want to remember to save your settings when you're using a Mystery Core, because otherwise it won't save your settings. Much better. Um, I mean, so I don't know, like I have Steam and every once in a while I'll pick up a game. Like I like playing modern racing games. So, I mean, that's cool. Um, do I have any Netflix or Amazon Prime shows I'm watching that I could recommend? Uh, I just finished watching, uh, doing a complete rewatch of the entire Sopranos series on Amazon Prime, but that's obviously not a new series. Um, Formula One Drive to Survive on, um, on Netflix is awesome. Uh, believe it or not, I still haven't finished watching the second season, but my wife and I watched like three episodes of it last night. Uh, she's as into that as I, it's funny, like actually watching that show got her into Formula One, which, you know, fine with me, like, you know, whatever it takes. Like now she'll get up, well, we haven't had any races this year, but you know, like last year, like, you know, she'll get up and watch races with me now, which is pretty cool. So uh, with Double Dragon 2, uh, the the two buttons, like one button will always punch to the left and one button will always punch to the right. And so that's why like it was, it was hard playing this game with the buttons reversed because I would hit the button to punch right on the screen and it would punch left and then vice versa. Uh, and that's because like if you have a two button PC Engine or Turbo Graphics controller, the one button and the two button I think are swapped like the A and B button on an NES controller. So, uh, is Formula One popular in the US? No. Uh, I, I guess probably, I mean, NASCAR is what's popular here. And then we have IndyCar, although I wouldn't call it very popular. I've been to multiple IndyCar races and it's never a huge crowd. Um, I guess just, I would say in general, motor racing is not that popular here outside of NASCAR. And even NASCAR, to be honest, like compared to like, the major North American sports, you know, baseball, football, basketball, and hockey, um, NASCAR would be way down the list.
This is definitely not a bad game. I, I forgot. I, I've played a bad version of Double Dragon 2. But I don't know. I don't remember where. Oh, that sucks. You're supposed to go to the Long Beach Grand Prix. Sorry, man. Is that a shovel? I think so. I guess I haven't mentioned the music, but um, the music in this game is pretty cool. Uh, NASCAR has the largest crowd live in the U.S. Uh, I would, I would think it has to. I mean, there's so many seats in, you know, on those oval tracks. Um, am I looking forward to the pairing of Norris and Ricardo at McLaren? Definitely. Just in general, uh, silly season this year has been uh, pretty silly so far. So um, it just seems like McLaren is on their way up. And, you know, they're going to have Mercedes engines, right? So um, that might even, you know, make them be more on their way up. And it just seems like Renault just hasn't really done anything. So, which is crazy just because, you know, Renault is, is, is a factory team. And so they really just don't have an excuse for... Um, for sucking so bad, quite frankly. Oh, man. Have I tried out any of the latest generation of force feedback steering wheels? Um, I have a Logitech um, something. I forgot. Logitech G something. Whatever the whatever the current like new Logitech wheel is. Um, I, I mean, it's pretty good. I understand. You know, I know it's like, it's not... There are much better wheels than what Logitech makes. But, you know, for a casual like me... Um, I think it's totally fine. So, uh, like, I don't ever use that and like wish I had something better. Um, I did get a chance one time to to use um, a setup that is like way way nicer. Um, that was at a, a it was at an automobile museum, and uh, and I don't actually know what it was. I I, I don't know, but it, I mean, it was like for me, it like. It was hard to drive actually because the wheel felt so heavy um, because I think it felt like, you know, realistic. And uh, I mean, it was pretty cool. I mean, I get kind of like, I guess, I mean, not jealous really, but you know, you see these racing rigs that these racing drivers have because now they're doing all these virtual races and like, like, man, that would be really cool. Like, I probably wouldn't want that in my house just because I don't really have room for something like that. But like, if, if there was a place that I could go and pay like, you know, I don't know, 10 bucks an hour. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know what a reasonable rate is to like use one of those. Like I would a hundred percent do that, you know, like on a Friday night or something, like I'm going to go drop 30 bucks, you know, over at this like sim racing place, you know, and play some eye racing or something. Um, I'd be all over that. And I mean, maybe if you go to like bigger cities or something, maybe they have something like that. I mean, it would kind of make sense. All right, Brian says, in L yeah, in L.A., you got that. I'm not surprised. Uh, thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. Oh, that's a cool sound effect. Listen to that. That sounds kind of realistic. How dare you? I'm enjoying this way more than I thought I would. Yeah, if I'm ever in LA, I'll go try to check out that base 51 place.
It's kind of like, but speaking of that though, one of the things I wanted to do, so like now I have this two monitor set up down here and then my wife has two more of this exact same monitor. And uh, I mean, this computer that I'm streaming on, like you can, you can play games on this computer. I mean, it's a pretty good, you know, it's not like what uh, Lazy Game Reviews just built, but I mean, it's a pretty good computer. Like I can, you know, I can play like project cars and stuff like that on it uh, with the settings turned up. And so, um, you know, I was thinking I could go like snag one of my wife's monitors for an evening or something and have a three monitor setup going. Uh, you know, because with racing games, it's either one monitor or three monitors, and they're not really set up to run with two monitors. So otherwise, you're just staring at the bezel, which, if you think about it, is more realistic because then it's like staring at that center pillar of a halo. Dead again. Like I said, I'm just surprised. This game is just a lot better than, than I expected it to be. Um, like, this is a very playable beat-em-up. Way better than the first Double Dragon, that's for sure. When's the, when does the helicopter scene happen? In the NES version, there's this part where you go into a helicopter and, like, randomly the door keeps, like, opening and closing, and when it opens, you can get, like, sucked out. But then you use that to your advantage to try to, like, put your enemies in a position where they get sucked out. Oh, speak of the devil, I bet... Probably after this is when that's going to happen. Arcade Ages is trying to get his Mayflash working with the Mister. That'd be cool. There's, I've just found that there's just like some USB controllers and USB adapters that just won't work. Um, like I bought uh, from Retro USB. So those are the people that make the AVS system. I bought. Um, I bought an NES to USB adapter and a Super NES to USB adapter. The uh, the NES adapter works just fine. And so that way I can use a real NES controller with the Mister, and that's awesome. The Super NES adapter just doesn't, uh, it only registers some of the buttons, so it's basically useless. Uh, so that's too bad. And then, uh, you know, I have the Nintendo you know, it's the Super Nintendo controller that they released for use with the Switch. Like, if you have the Nintendo... Like, the one where you have to be a member of the online thing in order to order it. Um, I have one of those, but that won't... Because uh, I don't think the charging cable is not meant to be, like, a data cable. It's just a charging cable anyway. So, uh, that won't work with the Mister with the cable. I don't know if maybe it'll work with the Mister with a Bluetooth uh, receiver. But, I mean, that's not why I bought that controller, so I kind of don't really care. And, in fact, that controller works really well um, for playing Streets of Rage 4. So uh, that's what I've been doing uh, with that. Uh, Games Commentary said, As a guy who tends towards early consoles has a good grasp of eras of video game culture, how do you view the PC gaming culture of around the same era? Um, I guess it depends on what you mean by that era, because like to me, like PC gaming really entered a golden age in the early 90s uh, with uh, digital sound cards. Um, you know, obviously VGA graphics are a little bit older than that, but then the weak point uh, of PC gaming was the sound. And by PC gaming, I'm talking about like IBM clone. Uh, this is a really big helicopter. Uh, IBM clone PC gaming. You know, if you if you had a computer in the 80s for gaming, you really probably wanted a Commodore 64 uh, until the Amiga came out. And then, I mean, really, well, I mean, I'm not willing to say that the the Amiga is like the best gaming computer just because there were so many awesome games uh, if you had a DOS PC back in the day. But, I mean, really, you couldn't go wrong with either one of them. So, um, but honestly, in the 80s, like... 
even an Al honestly an Apple II, there were a lot of really cool games on the Apple II, uh, especially if you had an Apple IIe or an Apple II GS. But uh, you know those weren't cheap compared to something like a Commodore 64, which you could just pick up at Toys R Us. And and then of course you had the Atari 8-bit computers, which I have very little experience with. But um, those were graphically superior to the Apple II. Uh, as well so uh, there were a lot of cool games there as well but for me at least when I think of like PC gaming you know I'm thinking of like you know a 386 or 486 you know obviously with a super VGA monitor and uh, you know like a Sound Blaster 16 or something Uh, dead again. Can I continue again? Oh, okay, I got another life. Oh, yeah, see, that guy just got sucked out the door. Oh, I'm going to get sucked out the door. Well, I took that guy with me, at least. All right. Wow, Brian got his C64 at Kmart. That's awesome. Well, now we're in the cockpit. Somebody said, make America mid-90s again. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. Tell you what, as 2020 drags on, I'm missing the 90s more and more. Brian says Target sold Commodore 64s and 128. So in the 80s, we did. I don't remember us having Target until maybe the late 80s. Like, I think we, we had like a different chain where I lived and then like it got bought out by Target. And then like, because I definitely remember us having Target uh, during the 16-bit era. Because uh, that was like, oh, this guy is really handing my ass to me. Uh, the first place I ever played Super Mario Kart was like a Super Nintendo demo kiosk in, um, in Target. Smoke Monster says that he feels like the 90s ended by the late 90s. You know, Smoke Monster, you've been extra witty lately. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. Anybody know what time um, My Life in Gaming starts their stream? I kind of did mine early today just because uh, I'm not trying to step on toes. Um, I mean, maybe that sounds kind of stupid, but I just kind of feel like Sunday nights are their night to live stream, so I don't want to try to be creating competition, even though, I mean, they get a bigger audience than I do, so I don't know why I care, but uh, I don't know, just out of respect or whatever. All right, so it's looking like we crashed in the jungle. I wasn't really paying attention. And obviously I can't understand a word they're saying. Okay, they start at 6. Uh, all right, so we got... That's that's actually probably a good time for me to wrap up. So, um, so I will uh, do that. So that gives us about 45 minutes or so. Uh, Ed, if you haven't checked out their stream, you sh I mean, I, I, they do a good... They do a nice job streaming, and there's two of them, so there's a little bit more banter 
Uh, and sometimes they have guests on, so then there's more than two people on there. But, um, uh, you know, for them, it's like they stream, like, very consistently, like, every Sunday night, which I think is cool. Uh, just because it's nice for people to know, you know, that every Sunday night they can watch the stream, uh, watch the stream if they want to. Um, you know, unlike me, who does everything very inconsistently. There we go. I was trying to get that guy to go off the ledge there. We go in? We don't go back up, do we? Why? And why did I come down here? Where were you buying this guy? Brian says he, he brought a VMU today for the Dreamcast, and the guy helping me had no idea what it was. Was this at a video game store? Oh, damn it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who su who suggested this game on Twitter, but I want to go thank them after the stream because uh, this game has been really been a pleasant surprise. You know, and that's one of the really cool things um, about something like this. You know, having a Mister or you know, I don't I don't know this for a fact, but I imagine that you can play Turbo CD games on like a Raspberry Pi, uh, and I'm sure you can in something like RetroArch. But you know, like for most of us here in North America. You know, like a. Do I have to jump across that? Uh, you know, a Turbo CD, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier about the Amiga. Like, the Turbo CD is like this untapped resource. Um, oh, no. Um, of games that most of us have never gotten to play. Oh, I got game over. That sucks. Jerry's off to do yard work. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out, Jerry. Sorry, you have to do yard work. Um,. Although, I actually, I don't know why I'm saying that, because I actually like doing yard work. So, uh, Ralph wants to know if I have any uh, Let's Reads coming up. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I might I might do that uh, Super Nintendo uh, Buyer's Guide one. Uh, sure, Smoke, we can do that. Um, hit me up, man. How do I... You said it's a, a script. So, I guess I'm going to have to do that real fast. And then... Going on. Why isn't my menu button working? That's annoying. My menu button's not working, Smoke. I don't know what's going on. I must have done something. Um Yeah, I don't I don't want to make people wait while I try to remap the buttons because I don't have a keyboard hooked up, so um but just tell me what script is it. So, okay, enable fast controller pulling in there. Um, yeah, I don't have a keyboard hooked up, Smokey. Um, so I'll just do it later. It's no big deal. But thank you. So let's get back into the Turbo Graphics core. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what people want to see next. What else we got on the list here? So um, well, I was kind of curious. Uh, somebody asked to see R Type Complete, which I thought that would have been kind of cool. Um, just cause that's just our type, but it has, uh, uh, a, like arranged music or like red book audio or whatever. So that might be kind of cool. Somebody else wanted to see Gradius too. We've seen that before. Um, oh, the, the Ray, I'm not going to say this right. Is it Ray Zamber? I don't know. Ray, it's gotta be Ray Zamber, I guess. Um, somebody asked for two and somebody else asked for three. 
So, uh, but you know, I don't think I've ever actually checked out uh, our type complete. So I'm kind of curious uh, to see it. Uh, all right, Oni 700, we will see you next time. There it is. Wow, look at that. Turn-off。1977年に同じく打ち上げられたボイジャー I've just never watched this before, so I'm curious to check it out. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. You watch my stream of my life in gaming. You have excellent taste, sir. Really wish I could understand this. 21世紀中頃、すでに地球の総人口は100億にも達しようとしており、人々は居住区をコロニーや各星々に求めるようになっていった。またこの移住計画に伴い、宇宙開発は急速に進んでいた。そんなある日、至るところで未確認の宇宙
Well, I don't understand why I don't have like a special weapon now. Like, did they change? Did they change some things about the game or something? Oh, hey, Keith Courage, what's up, man? Oh, there we go. Now I have the little laser things. Yeah, I mean, super dimensional. I mean, there's the thing is, there's just nothing wrong with the chip version of the game. So, like, you know, part of me thinks it's cool they did this, and part of me kind of doesn't, I guess. I mean, like I said, this rearranged music, it sounds cool, but it just feels weird playing it with the original game, you know? Like, this kind of thing where, you know, if they made like a modern remake of the game, then like, that, you know, maybe it was on, like, the virtual console. You'd have the option of playing, you know, the game with, like, improved graphics and rearranged audio uh, or playing the original version of the game. But just playing the original version of the game with this, like, weird music, uh, I don't know, it's just a little bit weird. got some cool beat beat to it you know but you see now you i've picked up a, a power up oh damn it but you don't you don't get the uh, special weapon is that normal maybe that's normal and i'm just going crazy tonight I was really curious to check out one of these Ray's Amber games. Um, and then, like I said, I've got some games on here that are not on this list, so. I don't know which one's better, two or three, so I'll just start with two. or what? Seems like it's hung and not in a good way. Um, well, let's try the third one then. I mean, it could be that that's not in the right format, like, you know, BinQ or bin ISO. like maybe that one's in some weird form. Oh, no, you know what it is? Maybe it's because the arcade card is, is I think, still... In. Let's try taking that out. Disabled. I'm not saying that's going to solve our problem, but... Still doesn't seem like it wants to load. I wonder what... Um, I'm just going to check and see what format those games are in. This could be pertinent information. 
No, nope, they're in QISO, so I don't know what um, I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I should try. I'm just gonna try rebooting just in case. It just seems like weird that neither one of them wants to load. So. Oh, there we go. All right. I don't know what that was all about, but uh, no harm, no foul. All right, the dash move on button one. All right. Um, just seems like maybe uh, maybe R type complete uh, put the core in a bad mood or something. Oh, I see. All right. Now, just full disclosure, I've never played this game before, so um, I'm just saying that because I want to make excuses for my poor gameplay. Oh. I don't like these guys. Kind of a pet peeve of mine with um, shooters is um, shooters that have like a lot of enemies that take like too many hits to kill. And that's kind of the case with those guys. Although it seems like really you should just avoid them. Like they just go off the screen anyway. So, you know, there's... There's some games where it seems like you're sort of pressured to kill everything. Like, I think Gradius is kind of like that. And then I think there are other games that are more like our type is probably a good example where you kind of have to ditch that habit and realize that you don't have to kill everything on the screen. You're, you just want to stay alive. Try it one more time before we uh, check out Raise Amber 3. And then maybe after that we can try one game that was not on the Twitter list, and then after that we'll just sort of wrap things up. This dash button's pretty cool, though. That's I've never seen that, I think, in another shooter. See, the bottom of the screen is kind of cut off in the... Um, oh, damn it. I feel like there's pertinent information underneath the bezel of this, this fake TV. Uh, Brian, we were mostly playing like a bunch of like anime softcore games, so, um, which I know you don't like that kind of stuff, so, uh, I would say that you didn't really miss anything.
go. All right, what killed me the last time we got this far? Uh... Oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> the same guy. It starts you, yeah, it starts you off all the way back to the beginning of the level. Okay, I don't care for that. Uh, unless I just suck so bad that I have yet to even make it to the first checkpoint, uh, which is definitely possible. Let's try the third one. That beer's empty. It's not bad. I made a beer last two hours, though. So it's weird. It loaded up just fine. I don't know why. Um, uh, why we were having problems. Can I move? doesn't seem like it's centered that well. Maybe that's why some of this stuff's getting cut off. Yeah, that's better. Oh, I don't like that noise. All right, we still got Dash. Not super into this weapon, I gotta say. It's definitely got better graphics than the second game, though. I mean, the music's kind of cool, but it's really being drowned out by the uh, sound effects. whole thing kind of reminds me of, uh, what is that, level 3, I think, in R-Type. Well, that's not very nice. This game also has uh, auto fire, I see, like you can just hold down uh, the fire button. It's funny, I just, whenever I play these games, I never assume that. Like, and I'll just sit here hammering the button. I don't know why I just thought of this, but, um, you know, I was really looking forward to watching the new Top Gun movie when it comes out, but I guess now, you know, it's doubtful that theaters here will be back open by then, so that's kind of a bummer. What are we doing here? We found a new weapon because the other one was pretty useless, but 
Boy, the sound effects in this game are really terrible. Kind of loud, too. The original Top Gun is coming out on 4K next week. That's pretty cool. I mean, I don't have a 4K TV, so it doesn't help me, but just the fact that they're doing that is really cool. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Is there something I'm supposed to be doing here? Or, like, because this seems stupid that we're just going to keep going around this ship. You got anything to say there, Smoke? Somebody says, where's Bithead when you need him? Yeah, like, wouldn't... See, a stream like this would be perfect to have Bithead on, but what are you going to do? All right, we finally moved away from that thing. Uh, nothing, Smoke, never mind. Well, I think one thing we can say is that this game is way, way easier than Ray's Amber 2. I don't really want that. I'm kind of enjoying this whole flames thing I got going on. All right, see you later, Brian. I don't understand. Put the stank in it. What, what, what the heck? Uh, can you change the balance if somebody else asked that now? Um, that I can tell you cannot change the balance uh, on the audio yet, but I wouldn't, I don't have any inside information at all. I'm just guessing. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that as uh, a feature in the future. A future feature. Is that, I think that's it for the list. And then I said we were going to look at one thing that's not on the list. So, um, yeah, this TV does have a good picture for how old it is. I agree. Uh, so let's see what else we got here. I'm just going to go back to the top. Oh, yeah. Actually, I wanted to kind of check this one out. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Um, you know, there were these two parody games that came out uh, on the Turbo. Um, there was Parodius Da and then uh, Star Paroja. And it's kind of the funny thing about this game is that, and listen, far be it for me to be like a pronunciation Nazi because, you know, I've been on the receiving end of that uh, plenty of times, but everybody calls this game Star Parodia. But this game is a parody of the Soldier series, and it's pronounced uh, Star Paroger, like Soldier. And in fact, in, in Japanese, the game is, is pronounced that way. It's, um, I forgot, but, uh, but it, it's Paroja. It's, it's Sat, I don't remember how to say, how they say Star, but uh, whatever it is, and then, and then Paroja. Because uh, it's Star Paroja, Paroja, not, not Parodier. But I mean, whatever. I don't really care if somebody says it that way. Um, 
You know, I don't think I've actually ever had Little Caesars pizza, and I really would kind of like... I mean, I know that it's bad, and, like, that's cool, but, um... So everybody's... Like, people like this game because you can play as a PC engine. That's pretty neat. I'm going to try playing as this dude first, and then maybe we'll we'll try it again and play as a PC engine. But, um... So, yeah, like, like a, a $5 hot and ready pizza, you know, like... I'm sure that's disgusting, but I still kind of want one. Oh man, this game controls just like a Soldier Series game. Like, I'm not the world's hugest fan uh, of uh, Parodius Da, but this game's pretty cool. See, the thing is, here where I live, there's a... Um, Oh, screw it, I'll take it. Uh, we have a Little Caesars here, and then right next door we have a um, frozen yogurt place, you know. So, which is funny because, you know, I don't know how many of you guys go out to these frozen yogurt places where they um, they weigh their yogurt and, and you pay by the ounce. But I guarantee you that if my wife went to uh, Little Caesars and had a pizza and then had frozen yogurt, we would pay probably three times for the pizza, or three times for the yogurt, rather, uh, what we paid for the pizza. Do we have bombs? I don't want I don't want to use one yet. Oh yeah, we have bombs of some kind. get some spread on this thing. Oh, I don't want that. Kind of one thing about this game is it's it's it can be hard to tell like what's an enemy and what isn't. Like there's so much going on on the screen. Like now you got these Dr. Mario things coming down and like some things seem like I should be shooting them but then they're just like background elements or something. But I guess that's just the kind of thing that, you know, if you put some time into the game, you'll just learn from experience. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so. Oh boy. It was weird, it just didn't seem like it was registering any hits, but I guess I was doing something. saw somebody say it would be nice to have the Noid come back. You know, I'm kind of surprised actually. I mean, you know, these days, like, you know, retro stuff is so in that would anybody really be shocked if if Domino's brought back the Noid? Which I think that's a great idea. Uh, I still have a Noid bendy toy. What time is it? 5.45. Alright, so this is going to be the last game we're going to play because it's 5.45. So, see, I'm like the warm-up act for for Cory and Try. Oh, I didn't see that. Budweiser brought back a What's Up com commercial. Those were annoying, though. Oh, too many things. Wow, that's a cool background. Uh, by the way, just speaking of sort of these cartoony shooters, uh... As part of a, uh, you know, I was a guest on my friend Alex's podcast. Ooh, one up. Did I get it? Oh, there we go. All right. Um, 
I I uh, I had the opportunity to play for the first time Super Fantasy Zone on the Mega Drive, and uh, if you're somebody that even kind of likes the Fantasy Zone games, and you've never played Super Fantasy Zone on the Mega Drive, I highly recommend it. What is he pooping out? Are those vacuum tubes? How dare you! Oh, I'm dead. Oh boy, things are going downhill fast. Wow, you got a big hitbox. Oh, I make you start over. Uh, well, I'm not doing that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 5.45 anyway. So, uh, I don't know. Is there, I mean, is there anything else anybody wants to see? I mean, anybody else have any questions or anything? Um, I mean, you know, I, I checked out this the Turbo CD Core like a little bit uh, this morning. But, I mean, this is by far the most time that I've spent with it. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely very impressed with it. I mean, I don't, I don't see any reason at this point why I would hook up my, uh, my PC engine with my Super SD System 3 uh, down here anymore. Um, you know, maybe upstairs. I'm not saying I'm going to get rid of it, but just, you know, take it upstairs and plug it into my big PVM. Like, it'd be cool for that. But, um, you know, for the first release of this core... Um, you know, I, I, I'm very impressed with it. So, uh, I'll see. I put John Madden duo CD football in here. We won't play that. I'll lose a lot of, Oh, I wanted to check this one out actually hellfire S. So we'll, we'll take the stream out on hellfire S. Only cause, uh, I really like hellfire on the Genesis. And so I was really curious to check this one out. I mean, I don't know if it's like a sequel or if this is just some kind of enhanced version of Hellfire. Like, what's the S? Like, special? Yeah, no problem, Brian. We had this was it's like Land of the Brian's in here tonight. We got Brian. Is that Busser, Booser, Brian North, Brian Frober? I think there might have been one more Brian earlier. Um, yeah, the Brian that took off. And yeah, I agree. Mister really is making these old setups pretty irrelevant. Oh, Shane's here. What's up, man? Yeah, Hellfire is cool. I wouldn't mind. I don't have that game, but I wouldn't mind having it. How well does Mister work with a custom arcade cabinet? I mean, you could definitely make. Uh, ooh, that's loud. You could definitely get it working, but. Um, okay, so this. Oops. So this is just, uh, this is just a regular, it's the same Hellfire as the Genesis, but, um, it's got, um, you know, red, I can hear that it's got red book music, but, um, I also, I kind of feel like the graphics actually look a little bit nicer, um, which, you know, I mean, in general, I think that, uh, Turbo Graphics and PC Engine games are a little bit more colorful. Uh, and that definitely seems to be the case here. I'm not sure about some of these sound effects, though, to be honest. But uh, the thing I like about this is, I don't know if you you, know, you can see, I, you can change, you have like four different weapons, and you kind of change on the fly. And um, I think that's kind of cool. See, like, you have to use this one in order to, like, angle your shots in here and get rid of those guys. And you see, I keep picking up those P's, and those are powering up my weapon. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed, I have to say, with this version of Hellfire. This is uh, another Toa Plan game, by the way. A 
Oh, there's a JAMA adapter for the Mister. That'd be. I would. I might actually be willing to fork out for one of those. Like being able to shove my Mister into that cabinet back there. I mean, not just for playing arcade games, but honestly, like playing something like this on my cabinet. Like, how cool would that be? Get out of here. Didn't suggest zero wing. I think I actually put zero wing uh, on the SD card though, if I remember correctly. how you do that so that's kind of a cool it's kind of a cool boss because like you you have to go around i don't know if you saw that there was like four pink dots and you have to blow up all four of the pink dots and so it requires you to uh keep changing your your weapon configuration or or whatever you want to call it but but yeah i mean i'm like i said i, don't, I know i'm repeating myself but I, I know i just died but um i'm really impressed uh with this version of the game well, that sucks, boy. You lose all your power-ups when you die. Now I'm all slow again. But, you know, once you kind of get used to, you know, okay, I have to press the, the weapon select button X number of times to switch over into this to this other weapon configuration, um, you know, you can get pretty good at the game. And I'm certainly not saying I'm pretty good at the game. I'm just saying that you could get really good at the game. But I think as you can see, I mean, you know, I think you've got an idea this evening of how my shooter prowess is and it's not very good. And But, you know, a game like this, you know, kind of what I was saying earlier about like Gate of Thunder. I mean, this game is pretty approachable. And I mean, you can see how many power ups it's giving me right now. So, I mean, it's pretty, um, it's pretty generous with that. Like I've already got quite a bit of speed back and we got some more, uh, some more beef. Uh, maybe as Smoke might say, we've got some more stank. Uh, in our weapons now. No. Oh. Oh, damn it. So, and then this boss... Oh, I'm going to die again. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. So this boss, you can see there's, like, these tunnels going through the boss's, like, guts. And so so you have to keep shooting that, um, that like, pink sphere thing in there. and But then it keeps moving around. And so does the boss, which is really annoying. Oh, I didn't know he was still going to be able to shoot. Oh, damn it. All right, well, that's game over, but uh, that's a good time to stop anyway. But um, you can see, I mean, that's a cool game. Uh, Hellfire S, or if you don't have an easy means of playing uh, PC Engine games, uh, check out just regular Hellfire on, um, on the uh, Genesis and Mega Drive. So... Um, and yeah, that boss looks like a floor mat for kids, 100%. It looks like a um, uh, a floor mat that you'd play with your Hot Wheels on. Um, Brian wants to know what my email is. It's uh, cgquarterly at gmail.com. So that makes that uh, pretty easy. And yeah, having the mister on the Blast City, that's an Astro City mister, uh, would be pretty sick. Um, so yeah, anything else? Uh, isn't there a River City Ransom game? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there is. I don't have it um, on here, but I'm pretty positive that there is one. Like I said, I only put about you know 20 games or something on here. So, um, so yeah, I guess that um, I guess that will do it for tonight's stream. I hope you guys had fun. I had fun. Um, I really wasn't in that great of a mood to be honest with you when I sat down to stream. 
And now I'm in a very good mood. So that's thanks to you guys. So uh, I appreciate it. So um, hopefully uh, I'd still like to do a stream uh, with Streets of Rage 4. So it would be cool to make that happen. But uh, even if not, um, I would just like to stream something again soon. I just need to get back on um, in the habit of streaming. I don't I don't really know. You know, I was doing those Tuesday night streams because my wife wasn't home on Tuesday nights. But I mean, it's not like I can't stream when my wife is home. She doesn't mind. Uh, I just don't for whatever reason. So, um, so yeah, anyway, uh, you guys all have uh, a good evening uh, wherever you are. And I'll see you next time. Good night.